All right, good morning. I want to thank everyone for, uh, for joining us today. Um, as a candidate for county supervisor, uh, before I was even here, I made clear my highest long-term priority uh, was rebuilding San Diego's behavioral health system. I believe that there was a better way uh, to provide behavioral health service, uh, that being the combination of mental health and drug treatment services. Uh, I reiterated the same upon swearing in and again when I became chair. Uh, and that this remains uh, my highest priority as an elected member of this body uh, is really investing in getting the right care to the right person at the right time. Uh, and there are a number of pieces that are critical in order for us to truly fulfill the, the desire of a better way to deliver behavioral health. Uh, chief among them, foundational to them, uh, one of those pieces is the entry point into the behavioral health system, the most common entry point, especially for those who are in a state of crisis and state of distress, uh, and that is something we're here to talk about today, which is progress on our mobile crisis response team. Uh, over the last two years, we have made significant progress. We have a ways to go uh, in, in order to truly fulfill uh, the, 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 the vision and idea behind a comprehensive rethink of our approach. Um, but we have made progress, and, and some of that uh, is around issues of mobile crisis response team. And so today, I'm really pleased uh, to be here today joining our district attorney, uh, Summer Stefan. Uh, who has been a great leader and advocate uh, for all of the efforts we're trying to do comprehensively around behavioral health. Uh, I'm also pleased to be joined today uh, by Cecily Thornton Stearns, a, a leader here at the county for our behavioral health services and programs, along with our partners from Exodus Recovery, uh, who again have been great partners, uh, time and again have been willing to step up uh, and help as we try to achieve our, our shared aims and goals. Um, and we're here today to highlight some of our early successes we have experienced in our North County Mobile Crisis Response Team pilot project. Uh, this was an effort that was launched to pilot it, to work some of it out, along with give you an update on the status of taking this program countywide, to have true countywide uh, mobile crisis response teams uh, up and running across our entire region uh, that I believe will be up and running by midsummer. Uh, District Attorney Stefan and I. Uh, I know share the belief that, that in a lot of these instances where an individual is not a danger to themselves or anyone else, in those instances it should be clinicians, not cops, uh, who should be responding to the calls for help when it relates to mental health uh, or substance use disorder. Uh, we know that people with untreated mental health illness uh, are 16 times more likely to be killed uh, during an experience with law enforcement than other civilians uh, who are approached or stopped by law enforcement. And these mobile crisis response teams are a better way uh, to respond to these types of calls. Uh, you get a trained clinician uh, who this is their job. Uh, this is what they do. Uh, they have the training, they have the time, uh, they have the expertise, the compassion, the empathy. They are better equipped uh, to help individuals and help facilitate uh, a, a true uh, change in their trajectory uh, to break that cycle of poverty, addiction, incarceration. Uh, that repeats all too often. Um, in just over a month of operation, the pilot project for mobile crisis response teams has been available in Del Mar, Carlsbad Vista, Encinitas, Solana Beach, Oceanside, and the communities around Camp Pendleton. And we're pleased that the pilot program uh, is already showing positive results. Mobile crisis response teams respond to our most vulnerable populations in the field. They go to where the person is who needs help and care and tries to facilitate a better entry into the system. Uh, mobile crisis response teams in this uh, pilot are being deployed via the county's access and crisis line. Uh, that is 888-724-7240. So they are able to be deployed via the crisis line. Uh, but the goal of the, the countywide approach is to have it integrated uh, into the 911 system. Uh, and that is something we are working very hard to prepare for. Uh, but the team and the pilot are basically a mental health clinician, a case management, and a trained peer support specialist. And when called, the mobile crisis response team uh, goes to that individual needing care, and the teams are trained uh, for crisis intervention. Uh, they arrive on site, they assess a person's condition, spend time with that individual. A lot of this is, is just trying to help facilitate a, a de-escalation, a calming effect of what's happening, and then begin to assess and figure out where is the, the right placement, what is the right path, uh, how do we get this person uh, in a more stable environment uh, to help address their situation? The teams respond in trauma-informed manner. Um, they have the added bonus of being in unmarked vehicles without uniforms. 
Uh, sometimes just the presence of law enforcement for an individual who's in distress, who may have been justice involved, just the presence can escalate the situation. And these individuals uh, can do this. Uh, and then again, they have the option to uh, help transport the patient where they need to go. Um, Exit has shared one great story with us that I, I want to share with you all. Uh, there was a patient who had previously had a hard time connecting to services. Uh, they didn't have their medication. They were experiencing acute psychosis. The mobile crisis team was called to help after a family member uh, found it incredibly difficult to deal with their loved one. Uh, it was getting to the point where this individual's uh, life experience and situation was, was negatively impacting all of the family members uh, and their ability to operate as a family unit. And the outcome of the mobile crisis team uh, was exactly what we had in mind when this was put in place. The team responded to the home. They were able to facilitate an admission to a proper crisis stabilization unit for care and medication management. They followed up with the individual post-discharge from the crisis stabilization unit, helping provide resources, support, and a warm handoff to services. Uh, the team successfully connected this person to a behavioral health outpatient clinic and to case management services, which are currently providing continued support and stabilization to this person. This is an encouraging success story, but it also reinforces our need to have this level of service available countywide as soon as possible. Uh, last June, uh, before this pilot had even hit the ground in North County, uh, I brought forward a policy uh, that was approved by the Board of Supervisors to expand mobile crisis response team model uh, with an initial funding of $10 million. Uh, I want to thank again our district attorney for, for being integral and supportive in that effort. And I want to thank our behavioral health services team uh, for accelerating the implementation and moving fast. Uh, we know that we need to get this in place. The request for a proposal for the countywide coverage of mobile crisis response teams uh, has closed. The proposals are all being reviewed, uh, and we expect awards to be announced shortly with services coming online midsummer. Uh, the mobile crisis response teams will be a service that the County of San Diego uh, will provide uh, countywide uh, in all jurisdictions. Uh, right now, under the pilot program, people call the crisis and access line, but that is not the intent to be the case uh, when, it, when we get this up and running countywide. We know that community members are conditioned to call 911 uh, anytime there is a problem, and we know that for mobile crisis response teams to truly be effective, uh, it has to be integrated as an option in the 911 system. Uh, this is not the easiest thing to work out. Uh, there are a lot of logistical challenges, there are legal challenges, there are staffing challenges, uh, but we are working through each of those uh, with jurisdictions. We are presently working very closely with National City, the city of Chula Vista, and the city of San Diego to create the protocols for dispatches to be able to refer calls to the mobile crisis team, uh, again, when there's no violence uh, or, or safety concerns. Additionally, the countywide program uh, also will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, and will be available to folks of all ages, both youth and adults. Uh, and so we're excited to see this come forward and excited for the rollout. Um, once we have our teams in place, we will also do rigorous community engagement uh, to uh, let the public know this is a resource uh, that, that is there to be available. And so again, we're excited. Uh, the pilot has, has shown us uh, what so many of us uh, knew and believed that this program can work. Uh, it can be a significant part of getting that entry piece in. Uh, and I think this goes hand in hand with a lot of other efforts that we're doing. So um, with that, let me introduce our district attorney uh, who again has been a champion uh, for addressing this intersection of mental health, homelessness, and criminal justice throughout San Diego County. Uh, she was instrumental in launching the, the pilot program and has been a great supporter of our efforts to uh, expand it uh, and take it countywide. And, and uh, I'm pleased to, to have our, our district attorney, Summer Steffen, with us here today.